Lord. <laughs> we, I'll tell you, we got one family when they miss, they, we miss about 18 kids. So it's just good to, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. The first Sunday of 2022, amen. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. So exciting what God has in store for us. One of the things that I've been praying about and God has been really been putting on the leadership of the church, Doc and I have been praying a lot about this, is what direction does the Lord want us to go? Sometimes direction, how many know direction is important? Now, now guys, we're, it's not too important for us until we finally have to stop and get directions, Amen. But directions are important, and we need to have a, a purpose and a drive and to know where we're going and where God wants us to go. And we truly feel like God is leading us into this next year for some great things to happen. Amen. God is doing some great things. And if you had a year in 2021 that was a bad year, it was a struggle year, it was difficult for you, I want you to be able to put that behind you and look forward to what's to come. Amen. Because God is a good God. He is in control. Look at your neighbor and say, God's in control. Stop sweating it. He's got it. He's in control of every situation. And I was talking to someone the other day, and I said, you know what? It doesn't matter how hard I try to do things my way. God is eventually going to get his way. Amen? <laughs> That's so important for us to understand. We can make the efforts to do things our way, but guess what? It's going to end up God's way. Amen? And today I want to start off with a series of messages that God has laid on my heart. And I'm so excited about this series because I believe it's going to challenge us. I don't know about you, but I want the Word of God to not only inspire me, I want the Word of God to challenge me. In my challenge, I am changed. Amen? And when I'm challenged by the Word of God, it makes me look at, at the situations in my life, and it causes change. It causes, uh, I tell people all the time, it's great to be touched by God, but it's more great to be changed by God. Amen? To have Him shape you and mold you into what He wants you to be. And that's what we're striving for in this year to come, is for Him to mold us and shape us into what He wants us to be. You know, the new year comes with new opportunities and there'll be all kinds of new opportunities in the year 2022. But God spoke this into me. He said, I want more of you in 2022. I want more of you. I didn't get enough of you last year. I don't know about you, but when you first fall in love with someone and you first uh, find this love, and maybe even your love grows even deeper as you get in relationship even more, you can't get enough of that person. You love them so much. And I'm telling you right now, God loves you so much that he cannot get enough of you. Amen. He wants more of you. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. He is a God who wants more of us. You know, we have some messages coming over the next few weeks, and, and, and this message today is titled, Choose Him. Choose Him. Look at your neighbor and say, Choose Him. Now, the next few weeks, we're going to be going into going after Him. We're going to go into imitate Him. We're going to go into serve Him. And there's going to be things that we're going to be talking about. But today is one of the most important days of your life. It's the day that you have. Amen. We don't have yesterday. We don't have tomorrow. We don't have this afternoon. But guess what we have? We have the now. Amen? And that's the most important thing right now is that we look and we begin to say to ourselves, I need to choose him. I need to really focus my life and prepare my life to be in a situation to where I'm choosing God in every situation in my life. You know, choice was something that was given to us. Uh, God gave that to us in the Garden of Eden when he said, okay, now you've been created and I've created all these things for you. Everything's good and it's all for you, but here is the decision you have to make. So immediately God gives us that power to choose. 
We all know what happened with that choice in the Garden of Eden. We all know how uh, Adam chose and how Eve chose, but yet we have that power. And I think it's important for us to understand the power of our choosing, the power of choice that we all have. You know, as a as I review last year, I can see a lot of places in my life where Jesus couldn't shine through because of the choices I made. He was darkened or, or put out, his light was put out in situations in my life because of the choices that I had made, the choices that I choked out the things uh, that God wanted for my life, and I choked them out by the choices that I made. And you say, well, pastor, you know, we, we all make bad choices. Yeah, we do. How many know we all make bad choices? But yet we need to understand the power of those choices. Amen. We need to understand when we make a choice how powerful that is. We have been so blessed in this past year, but yet we still choose things over God. Amen. It happens. I can go back through the year uh, here at this church, and God has just been totally amazing uh, at what he's done in our church this past year. He has done so many great things that it would take us probably a month to begin to talk about the great things that God has done in 2021. But guess what? He is not done yet. Amen? He's ready to do greater things. Let's give him a hand clap of praise for that. He's ready. For us to move to that place that he wants us to move to. You know, we have uh, to make a choice this coming year to get closer to God. I call it choosing the word life rather than the world life. We have to choose the word life than the world life. And we have so many things in the Bible that teach us that choosing the world life can be deadly. And you can go there if you want, but Matthew 13, 22 is, is the main verse that I want to talk about, but it's, I'm going to read the whole thing to you. You can go there if you want. It's Matthew 13, 18 through 23. It's the parable of the sower. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes to, and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony ground or stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself. We can go into all kinds of different things, but I want to focus on one thing here. And, and he can immediately, uh, he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution, uh, persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Verse 22 is what I want you to grab a hold of today. Now, he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred uh, fold and some 60 and some 30. I want you to focus on verse 22 because what we're talking about here is that person like so many Christians today who are receiving the word, they're going to church, they're hearing the word, they're doing all these things, but yet the world is so much involved in their life and they're so involved in the world that they are losing out on everything and the word is turning into something and it's being choked out by our living. It's being choked out by busyness. It's being choked out by, I have other things more important than this. I have other things that I got to take care of. It's more important than, and, and can I say it? It's more important this Sunday, next Sunday morning that I go do this business than I go to church and get filled up the way I need to get filled up. That's the choking that happens when we're caught up in this world. And as we see, choosing the word life over the world life is so important. Go with me to Luke 10, 40, 42. Very familiar, but I want to share this with you because it's important that we understand. Martha was given a choice. She could have chose the word life, but she chose the world life and missed out on what Jesus had for her. She missed out on that. Luke 
10, 40, 42, Martha's choice versus Mary's choice. We're going to talk about that. But Martha was distracted with much serving, a lot of business. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. I want to talk about Martha for a minute. I want to share this with you because you may be a Martha there in here today. But I want to share with you, go with me to that moment where Jesus is coming to their house and Martha is busy and she's getting things ready. And all of a sudden now she's in the kitchen. She's trying to make the meal. She's trying to get everything done. Her focus is not on Jesus coming. Her focus is on getting the business taken care of. Instead of choosing to say, you know what, somebody else needs to do this because guess what? I'm going to get in with Jesus when he gets here, and I'm going to get everything from Jesus that I can get. But Martha chose the busyness. Martha chose to do the work and to choose saying, okay, I've got to do this, and I'm going to do this. How many are like that where you just take on, take on, take on, take on, take on? Amen. Most people are. But as I look at Martha and I see her situation and how frustrated she was, and can you imagine when she went to Jesus, now listen, the scripture's right there. She went to Jesus and complained about her sister. Can you imagine her with a ladle in her hand, with flour all over her face, her hair all strung up, and she's shaking her ladle at Jesus saying, you need to talk to my sister. Can you imagine how caught up in her business that she was that Jesus himself was sitting right there, the master of all things who could answer everything she ever needed, but she couldn't think of anything but the business. So I see Martha as she chose, she made the choose, she chose, she did what she wanted to do, she chose what she wanted to choose. And you and I today have to understand we have to be careful in those choices that we make. Now, let's talk about Mary, her choice. (laughs) I feel feel like I need to be more like Mary, amen? Amen. Mary's sitting there, and she gets into the house, and she sees everything going on, but guess what? She don't care about all that stuff. She doesn't even care if she's going to eat the physical food that's being made because she knows if she gets at the feet of Jesus, she's going to feed and feast on the spiritual things that she needs for her life. Amen? So now she's made a choice. I am not getting caught up in that other stuff when Jesus is right here ready for me. I'm going to get myself right at the feet of Jesus, and I'm going to sit, and I'm going to learn, and I'm going to get everything that I need to get. She made a choice. I'm choosing Jesus over these things. Now, see, we can begin to go ahead and go into this a whole lot of different ways, but I'll tell you what. She could have chose the business. She could have done that. She could have made the decision that I want to help Martha. I want to get in there. I I, I don't want Martha being mad at me. Guess what? How many times, should I say this? How many times do we choose not doing something for Jesus because we're afraid a family member might get mad at us for not doing something else? Okay, I'm stop meddling. I'm not meddling anymore. I'm going to move on. But choices we make... How many know have a benefit and they have a consequence? There are consequences and there are benefits to the choices that we make. Martha had to pay a consequence for choosing the way she did. And Mary obviously got a benefit from it, amen, being uh, uh, at the feet of Jesus and getting everything she needed from him. I firmly believe that God gave us the power of choice to choose uh, for a good reason. I believe that he gave us that power so that we would be able to choose him. He knew that in the garden that he had to put something there that would cause man to have to make a decision to choose him or choose something else. So from the very beginning of time, from the very beginning of the creation of man, we have been challenged with choosing the way we live, choosing who we want to serve. Choosing how we're going to go at this thing and choosing whether it's going to be God. And I'll tell you what, the power of choice is the very thing that puts us in the image and likeness of God. 
We can choose what we want to do. Somebody said the other day, well, I was talking to them about choice, and they said, you know what? I believe this. I believe no matter what you, you do, no matter what you choose, God already knows, and, 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 and it's already set up. But here's what i got to say about that. God made you with choice, and he is allowing you to choose your path. You can choose the path you want to go, or you can choose the path he has for you. We're choosing whether we like it or not. How many know that when you get up in the morning and you choose to do this or you choose to do that, sometimes you may say, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not making a choice on this. How many know even when you don't make a choice, you're choosing something? We can't get away from choice. Amen? It's something that's there. It's in our life. And it's something that we have to deal with. I looked up uh, uh, the, the word choose. Here's what it means. It says to decide that a particular person or thing is the one thing that I want the most. To choose is to decide. A person or a thing, if that's what I want the most in my decision. And I think we need to truly understand this. Whether we like it or not, our daily lives are showing our choices. Our daily lives are challenging us and putting us in a position to where we're choosing God or we're choosing the world. We're choosing the word life or we're choosing the world life. How in the world are we going to allow Jesus to shine through in 2022 if we're not where we need to be and making the right choices in our lives? Today, I believe this with all my heart. God expects us to choose him over the world. It's an expectation of God. Doc and I were talking in the office this morning, and I said, if people would realize how many uh, of God's commands, listen to me now, some people think, well, God just said, you know, kind of puts it that you can just choose it or not. But there are a lot of things in the Word of God where He commands us to do things. One of those things is to choose Him, to make Him first in our lives. Amen? Amen. So I know that there are expectations from God for us to choose him. God wanted Israel free from Egypt. He wanted them free from Egypt. And guess what? He wants you free from this world today. He wants you free from the captivity that this world can put on you. He wants you free from the bondage of sin and sickness and disease. He wants you free from that, and you have a choice to do that. He wanted Israel to enjoy the journey. This is something that's hard for me, okay? And I I don't know how you are, but this is very difficult for me because I grew up in a family where uh, a beautiful, wonderful family, I I couldn't ask for a better life. Some people say, well, you probably got issues too. No, I, I, I got my own issues, amen? But I grew up in a wonderful family, great family. But one thing that was in our family on a constant basis was when everything are going good, get ready, the shoe's about to fall. When everything is good and everything's happening right and when everything's... Be careful because something bad is right around the corner. And I spent my life trying to break that and trying to get through that and realizing that God wants my life to be full of joy and happiness. He wants me happy and healthy and being in the joy of the Lord. Even when trouble comes, even when sickness is in the household, even when the finances aren't where they need to be, even though there's some relational problem in the home, even though there's something going on, guess what? God said, you can enjoy this journey. But it's the choices we make that put us there. God wants and wanted Israel to be equipped for the battles. God wanted to do all the fighting for Israel. Do you realize that God, so many times through the word of God, God told Israel, shut up and just be quiet and do what I tell you to do, and I'll fight the battle. How many times in our lives have we come up against something and we get all ready to go into battle and we think we're going to win this battle? We think we know how to, uh, uh, to do it. We think we get everything set up. We make our plans and we get ready to do this. And God is sitting on the throne saying, if you would just shut up, be quiet, sit down, 
Let me have it. I'll take care of this battle. It's the choices we make. Do I choose to let God fight this battle for me or do I go at it? It's like I said, sometimes it's like running at a, uh, it's like running at a big old bonfire with a squirt gun. That's what we look like sometimes. And God's saying, man, just move over. I got a whole truck full of water with a big old hose here. I'll put that thing out quick. Amen. But it's the choices we make. It's how we do it. Go with me, if you will, to Joshua chapter 24. I'm going to share some things with you that God laid on my heart that we need to really focus on in 2022. Joshua 24, 14 through 28. If you're there, say amen. amen. This is the New King James. Here's what it says. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose. Wow. Choose yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Who did those great signs and sights in our sights and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites who dwell in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm. And consume you after he has done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. So Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses. Oh, I like this. You are witnesses. <laughs> witnesses, I'll say it again, against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. We agree. Now, therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods, which are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, God of Israel. You know what incline means? Have a dying love for. That's what it means. So there, he's basically saying, put away all those things, those gods. Put away all that other stuff and have a heart that wants to die for the Lord of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people the, that day and made for them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Then Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak that was uh, by the uh, sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, behold. This stone shall be a witness to us, for it, it, it has heard all the words of the Lord which he has spoke to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart each of his own inheritance. Joshua died shortly after this incident. These were the last few things and the last few words that Joshua left with his people. Choose. Make a choice. So far, we have not done too good. So far, we've allowed foreign gods to come in. So far, we've let a lot of things happen, and we got out of what we need to be the people of God. So now it comes down to you have to choose. Choose one or the other. 
but you're choosing something. Now, obviously, the Israelites chose to say, we'll choose God. They knew what it meant to choose God, and they knew what it meant to not choose God. Amen? And we need to understand that today. We need to understand the benefits of choosing God and the consequences of choosing the world. Amen? So today I want to leave you with some things that we need to do, things we must do to choose him over the things of this world. The first thing I want us to talk about today that we need to choose, we must choose to have a healthy fear of the Lord. There is a problem in the church world today. The church today does not fear the Lord. The teachings that we have been taught over the past 25, 30 years is God is your friend. Now, come on now. Pastor's not preaching about God being your friend. I know that he's your friend. But let me tell you something. You need to understand this thing. We need to begin to have a healthy fear of the Lord. And I know this, and it's amazing to me because I I looked up the scripture, and, and, and I think it's pretty neat. Uh, uh, and it talks about uh, how it's in Matthew 10, 28, and it says this, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear the Lord, him, who is able to destroy both your soul and both your body and put you in hell. There's a fear of the Lord that we need to begin to have if we're going to get to a place where God can use us in the way that he wants to use us. There needs to be a fear of the Lord that says you are God. You are the creator of all things. You choose whether I live or die. You know my days that I live on this earth and the day that I'm going to pass. God, you know what tomorrow holds for me. And I need to have a fear of you knowing that I can trust you. I'll tell you what, I feared my dad. I loved him, and I knew he loved me, but there were times when I did things I should not do. When I did things that I knew I shouldn't be doing, I did things that he said, do not do this, and I did it. Guess what? I feared the consequence that would come. And I think we have a church world today that does not fear God. It's all about, and and, and folks here, you've got to stay with me. You know, Pastor, is everything about grace. And we cannot be, we cannot make it to heaven without the grace of God and having faith in that grace. But listen to what I'm telling you is today, we have got so grace uh, uh, covered and, 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 and everything, the songs, every song's about it's okay, don't worry about anything, the grace of God covers you, and that, there is an underlying truth to that 100%, but we also need to begin to start preaching there's consequences when we don't serve God the way we need to serve him. When we do not do what God has commanded us to do, there is a consequence. There's too many times in people's lives they come to pastor, they come to doc, and they say, man, I got this going on. I can't seem to get rid of it. I don't know why it's here. And it's obvious that they have been disobedient to God, and it's a consequence of their choosing. They chose the wrong thing. Let me tell you something. Israel feared God. And if they didn't, God would do some things to remind them of how much they needed to fear him. Oh, man, he would open up the ground, swallow them up, strike them with lightning. Oh, he'd do all kinds of stuff to let them know, I'm God. You are man, and I am God, and you need to remember that. Some people don't like this kind of preaching because they say, well, it takes too much away from grace. No, it doesn't. It gives more to grace. Because that same God that I'm talking about today loves you so much, he'll do anything for you. He has covered you by the blood of Jesus Christ, his own son, amen, and grace is flowing to your life. But yet we need to choose a healthy fear of the Lord. Let me tell you something. I fear God, and it causes me to get closer to him. 
I fear God, and it causes me to get favor in him. I fear God, and it causes his protection over me. I fear God, and it causes his provision for me. I fear God, and he delivers me. I fear God, and it gives me confidence to go to him and ask him for anything that I need. And you may say, well, I, you know, I need to start fearing God. Yeah, you do. You need to start fearing God. Yes, he's my friend. Yes, I love him. Yes, I know he sticks closer than a brother. But yet I know this. I know who I am and I know who he is. And I know who he is. The second thing we must do is we must choose to have a made up mind to seek. See, there's a problem with made up minds today. I, I know I'm getting older. And I'm getting old-fashioned, probably to a lot of people. Lord, Doc, you're getting older, too. One more coming up this month. And I was thinking this the other day, even with my grandkids and everything, I was looking at them, and I was thinking how much easier it is today to not make up your mind about something. I read an article the other day, and, and my son graduated. Oh, Lord, I don't even want to tell you when he graduated from IU, but it was a long time ago. And I'm talking years and years ago. And I remember this speech that, that the president of the university gave, and his comment was, this was back then. He said that the generation that is graduating today will change their careers, not their jobs. They will change their careers at least five times. And I thought to myself, okay, it can't be people just can't make up their mind today. But what's happening in our world today, there is so much stuff. So much more out there to choose from. Now we can't make up our minds. Have you ever walked down the cereal aisle? <laughs> you know me, I love Walmart. That's my place. That's my pulpit. I go to Walmart. I don't go there just for something. I go there to find somebody and help them. Amen? Because there's a whole lot of people at Walmart that need help. Amen? And as I'm walking down the cereal aisle, I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. Which one do I choose? And I think the world that we live in today has so many things out there that you can choose from. And one thing that is so important that we need to drive home in this message today, it's time to make up your mind to serve God and God only. Make your mind up. Make it set inside your brain that I am not going to serve this world. I'm not going to fall into the things of this world. I am going to serve the Lord and seek him in every way. Amen. I am going to make up my mind. My mom always told me, you're the most bullheaded. There is no kid on this earth as bullheaded as you. There is something wrong with you. And she did, didn't she, brother? And I used to have a real problem with that, but guess what? I found out that it's a benefit to me in serving God. Because once I make up my mind to serve God, guess what? There ain't nothing going to move me. There ain't nothing going to change me. There ain't nothing going to redirect me. I'm serving him. I'm following him, and I'm seeking him. And that's what Joshua was saying. He was saying that to the people. You need to make up your mind. You either serve them foreign gods that you've brought in, and you either, you either serve these other things, or you serve the God Amen. that I'm talking about today. Amen. So it's a made-up mind. You say, Pastor, how do I make up my mind? You make up your mind by saying to yourself, this is it. There ain't no other way. There's no other road. There's no other avenue. There's no other place. There's no other thing. This is it. And nothing else matters. You say, oh, everything has to matter. Yeah, you know what I mean. Everything matters. But what matters most is getting to know him. Making him number one in your life. Number three, we must choose to face the truth about ourselves. Wow. 
Well, I had to wear this one. I wore this one all week. You know how it goes. I wore that all week long. Every time I looked in the mirror, God said, do you know yourself? Are you truthful with yourself? You know, there's a part of this scripture that we read uh, there in in Joshua, and he says that you're going to have to have the truth. We're going to have to look at ourselves and be truthful with ourselves. You know, people can candy coat and, 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 and people can tell you all the fluff that they want to tell you because they don't want to tell you the truth. Oh, come on. Come on. Amen. Do you realize how many times pastor would love to tell you the truth? <laughs> but the Holy Spirit says, don't do that. They can't handle that right now. Let me slowly show them the truth. Amen. Now, some people go right on and tell you the truth. Now, I'm going to say this and be careful because just because you think it's a fact and you want to say it and and you feel this way, don't make it the truth. All right? But we know the truth when we look at ourselves. There ain't no hiding the truth when we look in the mirror and say, who am I really? Who am I? What am I doing? And, and, and you know, when I, I think about this, Israel had to take a real hard look at themselves and where they were. They had to look within themselves and say, man, where have we come from? What what has happened? What have we done? What am I doing? What am I after? Who am I pleasing? Uh Uh-oh, did I I say that out loud? Who am I pleasing? Am I getting up every day and trying to please the people in my life? Or am I getting up every day and saying, Lord, today, my number one goal is to please you and you only. See, we forget this, that when we fall into these things and we begin to do these things and we begin to be real honest and truthful with ourselves, the truth makes us free. See, some people say the truth sets you free, but the scripture says the truth will make you free. A done deal. When you start giving yourself and getting into the truth about yourself, guess what? God will slowly expose. How many know the Holy Spirit is a gentleman? He's sweet about the things that he does, and, but sometimes he can be harsh and right on the point and right at it. I don't know about you, but there's been times he spoke something right into me, and I thought, man, I didn't like how you said that. <laughs> but how many know you don't want to argue with the Holy Spirit? You just say, uh, thank you, Jesus. I'll be looking at that. So as we begin to examine ourselves in 2022, and I would advise all of us to do it immediately, begin to examine ourselves. Some of you are doing it right now. That's a good thing. We need to examine ourselves, begin to look within ourselves and look at the truth about ourselves and say to ourselves, if this is really, really who I am, I need some help. I need God to step in and help me with this because I do not want this to get in the way of seeking him. I want this to go away. God, I want you to fix this in me. God, I want you to help me with this. Lord, I, want, I need you to, to shape me in this area of my life that's out of control, that's not the way it should be. And God, I just need to have truth about myself knowing who I really am. Not what my wife tells me all the time, how wonderful I am. Sometimes she doesn't say it wonderful. She says I got some issues. How many, you ever heard the word love is blind? There are times love is blind. But even when your wife of 45 years is telling you how much wonderful you are, how beautiful you are, whether there's something inside of you that says, Ugh, I don't know about that one. Because we know the truth about ourselves. And if you think you know the truth about yourself, guess what? The Holy Spirit really knows you. And he knows how to bring that stuff up and say, hey, you need to look at this. You need to really look at this. This is a hindrance to what God's wanting to do in your life. So again, this number three, grab a hold of it because we have to choose to face the, face the truth about ourselves. 
Number four, the last thing we're going to talk about in this section, we must choose to put away anything that keeps us from him. The first thing that he did, he said, you need to put away the mother gods. You get rid of that stuff. Now, see, when you're looking at the truth about yourself, these things will come up. What has got in the way? What have I invited into my life, even unknowingly, that has slowly crept into my life and is there now, and it's an issue, and it's an interference with my relationship with God. It has crept in, it's slowed in, it's there, and now I have to look at it, and I have to begin to say, I have to put this thing away. Now, let me say this because it's true. Some of you, there are people you need to put away. I didn't say put out of their misery. Okay, don't, yeah, don't kill them. Don't run out of here and say, well, pastor told me to do that. (laughs) But there are people in our lives that God is trying to show us they are joy suckers. They are sucking the life right out of you, and you're continuing to allow it to happen because they are maybe flesh and blood. See, putting away things that interfere with us and and choosing to put away those things that keep us from God is something that's so important. Because God's looking down and saying to us, if you want to get real close to me, are you willing to give that up? Are you willing to put that away so that it's not an interference anymore and I can do the things that I need to do in your life, but I can't go any further in your life because of this? This foreign God. We don't realize how fast we turn things into gods. Can I go there? We don't realize how fast we turn things into gods. There's times we turn our children into gods. There's times we turn our spouses into gods. We turn our pastors, our preachers, our our churches, our, our TV shows. I can go on and on and on. Sports, the things in this world, we can turn them into gods. God is saying, put away those things. Get them out of the way. They're hindering you. They're hindering our relationship. They're hindering the very thing that I'm trying to do in your life. You know, what are we serving? What has taken God's place in our life? Where is my passion now? Is my passion way over here and God saying, where's that passion for me? Where is those things? What have I been choosing In my life. You know, as we get ready to close, what are some of the things that will help me? I want to know what's going to help me make these choices. God, what are some of the things that I can do that will help me make the right choice in my life? Number one is choose God's word as part of your daily life. Get all of it that you can get every day of your life. I'm telling you now, when you get up in the morning, the first thing that should come on your radio or come on your uh, Alexa, is that her name? Anything that comes on in your house should be worship, should be praise, should be something that edifies and lifts up. And it starts your day off knowing, man, God's here. You want to get through some of these things that you having to choose and do in 2022, you got to understand, it starts with getting the Word of God in you on a daily basis. Let me ask you this question. In the eight hours at your job, ten hours, whatever you work, it doesn't matter, the time on your job and the time through your day, the conscious part of your day where you're up walking around and doing things, do you realize how much of the world is creeping in? And we think to ourselves, man, I'm giving God an hour a day praising. But yet we're given the other 16 hours, 17, 15, whatever it is, we're given that time to the world. So it's so important that we have a life of the Word, God's Word. 
Get it in you through music. Get it in through, through, through song. Get it in uh, through devotion. Get it in uh, through reading your Bible. Get it in by turning on someone who you, you know gives the word of God. Do something to get the word of God in you every day as long as you can through that day. And that's going to help you with your choices. Choose to remember how good God has been to you each day and commit to him. Let me tell you something. It's a good thing to remember how good God is. It's a good thing to remember what God has done for you. It's a good thing when things are going rough and things aren't going the way you want them to go to stop and take a time out and say, look, devil, I know things are bad right now, but guess what? God did this. God did this. God has done that. God has done that. And guess what? God is going to keep doing it and God's going to do it tomorrow too. Amen. It's important to make the right choices by remembering the goodness of God. Choose to make up your mind to sacrifice every day. When I get up in the morning, and this is true, this is how I roll, this is, this is me, that's the inside of me. When I get up every day, I pray this very prayer, Lord, help me sacrifice everything that I am, everything that I own, everything, God, help me sacrifice it for your pleasure. Let me be a tool for you today. Let me be a vessel for you today. Lord, let me be the one, Lord, that's there for that sick person or that one who needs help. Lord, let me be the one on aisle number four at Walmart that touches that person that just needs to hear that God loves them. Let me sacrifice everything about me, God. It's not about me. My life is not about me. My life is about him. And then he blesses me. Then I get to enjoy life. Amen? Amen. The last thing, choose to pray and communicate with God every day and allow the Holy Spirit in. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit's not preached about a lot today and hasn't been preached about. He hasn't been preached about for so long and taught about for so long. People don't even know what the Holy Spirit is sometimes. They don't even know who he is. You get in conversation with someone and say, yeah, the Holy Spirit was really moving in our church today. <gasps> Oh, you guys speak in tongues. They go right to the tongues. And I'm thinking to myself, whoa, the Holy Spirit is more than tongues. The Holy Spirit is God here on this earth with us inside of me. God living inside of me is the Holy Spirit. And if I can get up every day and choose to pray and communicate with God on a regular basis throughout my day and allow the Holy Spirit to talk to me and speak to me and guide me through my day and listen to him and do what he says, guess what? I will make some really good choices in my day. Because guess what? The Holy Spirit will never choose the wrong thing. I can guarantee you can rest assured that the Holy Spirit will never choose the wrong thing for you. So, Pastor, we're going to do this thing. Man, I, I know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. I feel it. I know it. God's already shown it to, to the leadership of the church. We already know there's going to be some difficult times coming. There's good, the people are going to be put through some testing right here at the first of the year to see where they're really at. They're going to be in this place where Israel was, where they're being told by the Holy Spirit, you need to choose. But guess what? When we choose the right thing, God has got some things in store for this church, this body, and I believe we'll be rejoicing and we'll be shouting along the way, and God's going to do some mighty and great things. How many know there's going to be a lot of souls get saved this year, amen? How many want your family members to get saved this year? How many want your friends to get saved this year? I know it's going to happen because God said, I'm going to bring them in. I'm going to bring them in. You just come to me. You just choose me. Choose me. Focus on me. Let me lead you and guide you. And I will show you my greatness. That's the God we serve. I don't know about you, but I'm choosing him. I'm choosing him. 
We all should be praying within ourselves, Lord, I choose you. Ray, come up here and play I Surrender All. We're going to open up the altar as we close today. We're going to pray together. I know COVID is out there. I'm so sick of COVID, I can't understand it. But guess what? The Holy Spirit is in here. And we just need to know. So if you want, come on up here. We're going to have a last prayer together as a church family. I to him I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all as we get ready to close in prayer I feel this in my heart. I really, truly feel this. If you will commit to him right now, make up your mind right now as you pray and as we pray to choose him over anything else, he is going to show you his greatness. Some of the things that you've been wanting to happen and just praying that will take place and happen in your life, God's going to begin to do those things. But it takes full surrender, full surrender. Reach out, touch somebody as we pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come. Surrendering all, bringing it all to the altar, laying it all at your feet. We surrender all. We surrender everything, God, that is in the way. God, we surrender ourselves fully and completely to you. Lord, we choose you today. We choose you. We choose you. And Father, we need help sometimes, God, when the world comes and our busyness takes over and God, our lives get out of control. We need you. God, I'm praying that the power of the Holy Spirit would begin to expose And reveal to us through revelation the things that are in the way. The things that are a hindrance. God, right now, I pray that every single person in this room, every single person that chooses you, God, you will begin to work with them. Speak to them. Talk to them. Walk with them. Show them, God, that you love them and you care. And God, that you're leading their life. Lord, I thank you for your word. Your word is so powerful. It can separate bone and marrow. It's so accurate. So accurate. It's like an arrow that never misses its mark. Today, you have shot the arrow and it's hit its mark God I thank you for that today Lord help us help us as we go into the year 2022 that you shine through and that we can give you more of ourselves God I thank you again for your word it's so powerful so wonderful Lord, change us. 
mold us, shape us into what you want us to be. God, when you shape us and mold us and you break things away and you take things away and you help us break those things off, Lord, the pain that's there, we know the Holy Spirit will help soothe. There's a healing bomb in Gilead. And you have it. You help us. Encourage those who are struggling today. God, touch the heart of every person in this place today that they will choose you. God, I pray that this church, this ministry, will continue to choose you. Walk in your path. Do what you want us to do. Preach what you want us to preach. Teach what you want us to pre teach. God, right now, I just pray for an anointing. The Holy Spirit anointing on every family that's in this place. Let the anointing of God flow. Lord, let them see, feel, know that you're with them every step of the way. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. You're worthy of every praise we can ever give. And we surrender it all, Father. We choose you. We give you that praise. We give you that glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. Let's give him another hand clap of praise. Amen. He's an awesome God. Amen. He's so awesome. We're just so happy you guys are here. Such a blessing. Feel your spirit. It's just a wonderful spirit. Do me a favor this year. Do yourself a favor this year. Keep choosing God. Some of us are going to have to break some things that have really took us a foothold that have really seeded into our lives. But God, God will help us do that. He'll help us break away from those things that hinder us. I'm ready. I'm ready for 2022. And guess what? I'm ready to do it with you. Amen. I'm ready to do it with you because God's got some good things coming. Amen. Pray for those that we talked about. A lot of people out sick today. A lot of people having problems and traveling and different things so just keep them in your prayers but again God is good and he's good all the time and he's faithful 